y'all, it's Jessica from Sloppy Swatches. Today, I have a look at the Jawbreaker collection that's releasing from Femme Fatale Cosmetics beginning on April 1st through the 5th on their Australian website. They will then trickle down to some of your favorite stockists, so be sure to check with yours to see if they will be purchasing these for you to purchase from them. I definitely recommend it. This is a five-piece collection based on the movie of the same name, and I'm going to go ahead and get right into the swatches. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my very favorite. This is Sugary Sweet Death. It will retail for 12 Australian dollars. So this one is described as a creamy white base filled with multicolored glitter shreds. It's opaque in three to four coats depending and also you may require just a little bit of fishing or glitter placement. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how it's swatched today for me on my natural nail. So here's a look at that first easy coat. This one does have a gorgeously milky base. I do find the glitters are fairly well suspended there. I didn't have to shake a lot or kind of turn the bottle upside down at all. I think it's just mainly in the way that I pulled my brush out from the bottle. I do recommend giving it a little swirl before you pull it out. You can see here with my second coat, I did use that method and I got a ton more glitter. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how this builds up today for me with a third and a final coat. I do really appreciate the finish at three coats. It's just milky enough and just opaque enough with a just enough glitter. But if you wanted even more, I would recommend going in for that fourth coat. So here's a look at that completed mini at three coats with a glossy top coat. So the glitter shreds, some of them are a little bit on the larger side. So I do recommend going in with one coat of your favorite glitter eating top coat. And then this is my final swatch photo at an angle underneath artificial lighting. I think that this is one that everyone needs. So next up is Violet, and I think that this is going to be a fan favorite for sure. So this one is described as a stunning bright purple magenta with scattered hexes and lemon, hot pink, and purple. So this one may also require a little bit of glitter placement and maybe some fishing and three to four thin coats. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how this built up for me today with my natural nail. So there's a look at that first coat. I did go ahead and grab one of those large lemon hex glitters. I did find that they are nicely suspended in this jelly base, however, a little bit more sporadic. So you may, again, want to do a little bit of that twisting motion and maybe even turn your bottle upside down. So there's a look at that second coat. It does add a little bit. And you can see there I did need to do a little bit of glitter placement with the larger hexes. And then I'm going to build it up today with a third coat. I did still have a good amount of visible nail line. This is very much a jelly polish. So if you want, you could always use an undie under this one or go in for that fourth coat. I want to say that even though I had very few of the larger hex glitters, even the nails without have a little bit of depth from those pink and purple glitters. And I kind of really love that finish too. So here's a look at that completed mini. I had a three coats with a glossy top coat. Those larger hex glitters are going to make a little bit of texture. So I recommend smoothing them out with your favorite top coat. So next up is a peachy fucking king, and this one is described as a summery papaya orange with turquoise gleam and holographic accents. Again, it's going to be opaque in three to four thin coats. I think the holographic effect on this polish is a little bit more subdued. I did not get this one out in direct sunlight, so maybe that'll kind of amp things up a bit. This first coat is a little bit sheer, so I'm going to go ahead and let that dry down and then show you how it builds up for me with a second coat. Two coats is going to add a little bit more of that really subtle turquoise shimmer as well as a deepen up that papaya finish. However, I do still have a good amount of visible nail line. So I'm going to go ahead and build that up with a third and final coat for today. Three coats kind of is on the edge of being opaque, but I did still have a visible nail line. If you wanted to, you could totally go in for that fourth or use an undie. So here is a look at that completed mani. Add three coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. Here's a quick view from a different angle with that bottle. I'll show off a little bit of the turquoise shimmer of that. And then this is my final swatch photo at an angle underneath artificial lighting. These last two polishes are really making me crush on summer vibes. So first up is the beautiful ones. And this one is described as a vibrant, juicy lime green that's packed with a red iridescent flakes. This one is a little bit of a crelly base, but it leans towards more of a jelly. So it is going to be a little bit I don't know how many times I've said that this video, a little bit sheer. It is one that you're going to have to build up. So here it is at two coats. Two coats is going to add more of those flakes. And I will never in my life be over these red iridescent flakes. It does still need to be built up. So I'm going to go in for a third coat. Three coats, again, adds a little bit of depth and some more flakes, but still a good amount of visible nail line left. I think it's just going to be par for the course for this shade. So here is a look at that completed mini at three coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. Those flakes do make a minimal amount of texture. One coat of your favorite glossy top coat will smooth that right out. 
So today, this is my final swatch photo at an angle underneath artificial lighting. We're going to round out the collection today with I Killed the Teen Dream, and this one I think would be my second favorite. So this one is described as a smooth teal blue crelly with blue to green shifting iridescent flakes. Again, I am like a huge flake fan. I feel like even if they go out of style, they'll never go out of style for me. So here is a look at that first coat. Again, quite sheer. You do get some flakes on the nail. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry down and then show you how it built up for me with a second coat. Two coats is going to add a ton more depth and more of those flakies. This one is super, super mermaidy for me, which I am totally obsessed with. I am going to finish this swatch off today with a third coat. I do want to say that this one did kind of minimally stain my nail plate. It did come off with a little bit of elbow grease, but I did want to go ahead and mention that. So here is a look at that completed mini at three coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. Here is a quick view from a different angle with the bottle, so you can see that color accuracy, hopefully. And then this is my final swatch photo at an angle underneath that same artificial lighting. So that does wrap up my swatch and review of the Jawbreaker collection. I'll go ahead and leave the storefronts down below where you can shop these. If you'd like to see more, you can also follow me on Instagram at Sloppy Swatches. So thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next time.